I like that you say they as if this wasn't a list that I came up with like two hours ago. It's a consp- The Illuminati is putting Catherine Zeta-Jones <laughs> into Scrabble, and I am not about it. Let's be best friends. Hello, I'm Cole Sauer, and welcome to Let's Be Best Friends, a podcast where I talk to people that I barely know and try and convince them to be my new best friend, because in times like these, who needs enemies? My guest today is one of my absolute favorite independent musicians going today, and an all-around lovely individual. We have Miss Sarah Fezakerly. Hello. I said that right, right? Fezakerly, yeah. Boom. Greatest podcast host alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like exactly, but physically. That's actually the best way possible to put it. Yeah, I've learned. I've had to learn over the years. To yeah, explain. Yeah. What's What's the worst? What's the worst that you've gotten like as a oh. mess up? Because I get some crazy ones because I have so many vowels in my last name. It's like short, but I get yeah. so many different ones. You know, probably the most like memorable uh, was you know when they announce your birthday over the PA system when you're a kid yeah, yeah. Um, and you're like all jazzed about it. Um, and, and the principal one year was like Sarah Fuzza Curly. And it was just like this like crushing moment of like fuzzy oh. curly, it's like not even. And you're just like, that person doesn't exist. Like that's not a person. So eventually they just stopped trying. <laughs> Sarah F A Z. Exactly. And you're just like, ah, that's, <laughs> That's me. That's me. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> Faz, is, Faz is fine. <laughs> Sarah Faz. That's actually kind of, if you ever transition from folk music to rap music, Sarah Faz is a pretty yeah. solid one. It is. There's it something is. there. There could be. Maybe I'm all wrong with the folk music. Yeah. And I'm really actually destined to pursue like 90s nostalgic rap. I love that. You'll be the fourth member of TLC. Oh, the dream. The dream. <laughs> <laughs> so here on Let's Be Best Friends, if it's your first episode watching, uh, we like to be very casual as we talk. We're trying to become best friends after all. And the best way to become best friends, I find, is to do something that both you and the guest enjoy. So I always ask what the guest wants to do. And today, the lovely Miss Sarah Fazakerly said Scrabble. So tell me why, tell me a little bit why you want to do Scrabble. Um, because it's something I know I can do well enough to actually maintain conversation through. <laughs> Ultimately, that was the criteria. Yeah. That I said. You were just like, you were just like, what's going to, what's going to allow my ADD yeah. brain to talk and play? Yeah. No, I, you know, like the skill set of cooking isn't strong enough yet. Right. And there were a couple ideas that I had and it was just like the safest bet is probably Scrabble. <laughs> I love that. That's even better, right? Cause it's, it's like a comfort thing. Right. Yes. Have so, you been paying attention to the fact that we can actually read other uh, users' chats, by the way? What? On this in the Scrabble thing? Prehistoric. Yes. That is magical. Yeah. So while you've been uh, doing what you're doing needed, I've been following along. It's been pretty funny. You've just there been following actually, other people's chats? There are actually other people using this program, <laughs> which is probably the, what impresses me the most. When I was on here last night checking it out, there was four people online. That's incredible. Which Wait, I was like, very how into. did you even? How did you even find this? I'll be honest. So, if anyone's at home wondering, we're going to be playing on. Uh, it's a website called isc.ro. It's the Internet Scrabble Club website, apparently. And so I found it legitimately. I spent ever since you said, let's play Scrabble. I have been scouring the Internet for a way to play Scrabble online with the friends for free. Because there's all these like I tried words with friends first, and I don't know when the last time you played words with friends is, but it is a absolute nightmare to play. I did not realize that it became nightmares. And then there's the uh, there's the Scrabble game in Facebook. There's a Facebook Uh, Scrabble game. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a lot easier. I didn't want to say it at the beginning because you were so hard to find this. I did. But I there really is, did. Uh, there's like the Hasbro, there's like an app for it. And then you like, yeah, you have it on Facebook and you can play with your friends and whatnot. So, you know, it was an option, but so is this. 
Well, that just that goes to it. show you, chat. Sometimes you work your hardest and you put out you put your all into something, and then just someone walks in and they're like, "Oh, by the way, Scrabble's yeah, on Facebook." <laughs> we're not we're not throwing away the we're not throwing away the Internet Scrabble Club. The Internet Scrabble Club. <laughs> I I want this to become famous. Like, if I, I want a like viral every, tweet to become famous. I feel like I'm looking at like Minesweeper. Like yes. Yeah. It's it huge Minesweeper like very bad. Let me let me yeah. get this. This is what we're dealing with for anyone for anyone who hasn't seen the beauty that is isc.ro. We were talking a little bit before the podcast. It reminds me of of MSN Messenger. Or like AOL online, like that old school, you know. <laughs> You're missing the chat. They're where, so good. Where are you seeing these chats? There's the sidebar. It's a side panel. It actually takes up like more than half of the screen. And right now there's a conversation between Lil Man and J Man. I and uh, who's the best man? <laughs> the, the, the ultimate question. They're saying, um, I like to be far behind and then win in the end. That's my pleasure. Just Someone for anybody is getting off to the Internet Scrabble Club, and that's terrifying to me. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm loving this. Anyway, continue, continue. I'll try not to, uh, um, try so, not to sidetrack too much. No, it's, hey, that's, honestly, that's all this podcast is. It is Here one comes large my cat. Tangent. <gasps> As I was saying about trying not to sidetrack too much. No, we love animals on Let's Be Best Friends. What's her, what's their name? This is Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Yeah. Aww. Can you say hi? You shy? Suddenly? <laughs> She's usually quite chatty. She was like, I was just exploring. I was just like trying to find the world, and then and then I got picked up. Yep. It's like the constant battle during class, too. <laughs> my uh, My cat only ever comes in the room if all the lights are off. Cause she's like very, she's very anxious and jumpy. So anytime I'm streaming or recording anything, she'll like sometimes poke her head in and I'll be like, Hey, what's up? And then she'll dart down the hall and I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Normally I've got two cats. I've got Bowie and Zoe and oh, so. right now Bowie is finally passed out into his usual coma on the couch. But <laughs> I was, it's surprising. He's very vocal. So we've gotten very lucky. <laughs> we are hashtag Small blessed things. here on Let's Be Best Friends. But I mean, I, yeah. if if this show had absolutely no background noise, I don't think it really would be Let's Be Best Friends. There's at least three trains per episode on my end. So nice, yeah. <laughs> familiar, familiar sound. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you. Let me see if I can if I can do this. Yeah. We 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 had figured it out beforehand, but then I oh yes. my god okay. Wait, okay, there we go. Match. Yeah, oh, here we are. Perfect. Oh, my God. I, All right. So you okay. are up first. Well, I'm up first. Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. I swear to God, I get either a Z, an X, or a Q in the first rack every time I play Scrabble, and I think that's what makes me hate Scrabble. Oh, really? I swear to God, I've never gotten a first rack that's just like, hey, here's like an S and like a T. Maybe some vowels. <laughs> maybe, maybe a couple vowels. You never know if you're lucky. If you're, if you're feeling good about it, you know. Uh, let's start off nice and nice and mild here. Okay. Okay. Team, I like it. That's good energy. It's a good start. It's a good start. I'm going to try and figure out my first word while I do. Uh, here on Let's Be Best Friends, we like to answer the five interview questions that Larry King used to always say. You have to get ready for every single interview you do. Because I'm a bad interviewer, I like getting them out of the way as quickly as possible. Those questions are who, what, where, when, and why. So, Sarah, we'll start with who. It's not intimidating, I swear to God. Tell us a little bit right. about yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. About who me? is Sarah Fezakari? Oh, my goodness. Oh, well... No one exciting. <laughs> uh, so I'm a musician. Uh, I'm currently attending Durham College for paralegal, which I'm very excited about. DC. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm. That's pretty much my life. I'm not gonna lie. I own cats. Um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Um, 
That's pretty much it. So right now, I actually just submitted to the um, online distribution site. Okay. My masters for my first debut album under the under the name Edith. Awesome. So, yeah. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um. And uh, I mean, that's basically what my life has been during COVID. <laughs> so you said you no, so it's your first that. it's your first album under the Edith Folk title, right? Yes. Can you give us any 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 kind of hot any kind of hot scoops? Any kind of uh, maybe what it, what it's called? What's about? Yeah, I can do that. Um, so basically, um, the album is called Hypo. My okay. idea behind it and behind the folk music thing in general, actually, was that um, I started writing folk when I kind of hit this wall with my blues rock stuff. Um, I was going through a phase. I was pretty unhappy at the time, which is generally like the predecessor of folk music. I feel like that's like the prerequisite is that there has to be some kind of melancholy mm-hmm. <laughs> involved in the writing process. Um, so... Uh, Yeah, I decided that I wanted to try and write some songs that were in open tuning, something I haven't really played around with before. I wanted to really focus on a lot of my focus was geared towards um, like live performance Okay, was my main focus in life when I was doing my blues rock stuff. And um, and I kind of just got to a point where I, I just felt like I wasn't growing any further by continuing to do the same thing um, and continuing to like only focus on like one element of this huge, vast, like, you know, span of music. Like there's a lot that goes into production that I never bothered to look at. There's a lot that goes into, Hey, (laughs) that's not appropriate. (laughs) I yeah, swear to God, it was the only word I could find. I swear <laughs> to God. Wait a second. What kind of show am I on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll I come felt back. so bad because you were talking about this <laughs> very like <laughs> heartfelt, like putting your soul on the plate and here I am spelling cum and scrapple. Oh, you got me. That was funny. That was Shit. funny. Oh, man. So <laughs> anyway... <laughs> fast forward um i wrote a couple really heartfelt songs really focused on the production this time of the album rather than just like what i'm you know how it's going to translate live mm-hmm. because they are kind of separate there is a separation of like you know your the capabilities you have in the studio versus you know what you can do like refining was never really a thing that i practiced before so i'm really excited i kind of really tried to practice that and um and so I'm actually doing two EPs. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yes, because I became not as depressed at some point and decided to write some more rock stuff, too. Nice. Um, yeah, it was interesting. The whole rebrand and switching the name thing was because I thought that I was committing to folk. But it turns out that I can't just, like, commit to, I don't know. Like, why Like why limit yourself, I guess? Yeah. Was like my was my whole uh perspective on it so it's like you know what instead i'm just gonna do a rock album and a folk album so hypo is the folk album okay. and mania will be the rock album so i love that it's just like it legitimately just seems like you just like making music like, oh i love it like that's all it I is to it. you right it's just it's just this is what i yeah. love doing and i want to do it as much as possible well yeah i mean it it got to a point where like, I didn't really, I wasn't really doing it in a way that brought me joy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you lose that, like you really like lose, like you understand, you understand what the value was to you. Like sometimes you think like, Oh, I'm just going to be, you know, I'm just doing this to be, you know, successful or like, you know, I've got my eyes on the prize for success. And mm-hmm. it's, it's like, well, actually it's like a barren, empty void <laughs> to me to, to look at it that way. Like, you know, when I started actually making money, it was in a way that like didn't make me happy. It's like I, I do cover shows to make money. And sure, that's that's how you make money yeah. when you're not big and famous. But 
yeah, I love what I do. And it took me a while to figure that out, but I figured it out. So, I mean, it takes some people, you know, their entire careers to figure that out. Right. So that's, I mean, huge. And I mean, congrats to you, honestly, for for I don't want to say giving up the bag because it's not like you can't make money making folk and, and blues and all the other music you want to do. But like, you know, f- shit. <laughs> You so you know you you had the opportunity to keep making money. You could have ostensibly probably kept just doing like that covers, weddings, whatever for you know forever and ever and ever. Amen. Made a pretty solid amount of change, right? Yeah. But you were like, nah, man. I wanna I wanna make I wanna make fucking art, man. I do. I do. <laughs> Honestly. I just want, you know, and the other part is like, nobody comes to your fucking shows if they know that they can, sorry, I swore. Nobody no, comes to your shows. Okay, that's good, that's good. <laughs> nobody comes to your shows, really, if you're always playing for free down the street, for instance, it's kind of the way it goes. Right. But beyond that, it's like, you know, you're also playing songs that they know. And so without kind of like, to be fair to the rest of the world, it's kind of like, you can't make them choose between something that they already know they love right. uh, for free versus um like something that they're kind of unsure of that they have to pay entry to get into like it's kind of like an unfair i used to get all like whatever about it and like at the end of the day and nobody owes you anything i just Mm -hmm. but i i just want to give people i just want to give myself the most fair opportunity i suppose to be viewed as an original artist um because you just, you realistically, you can't expect people to choose this unfamiliar thing that costs money versus yeah. like, like, it's just not the way that maybe people like on average think about music. I mean, everybody just wants to have a good time. Yeah. Right. Less money guarantee of songs that you'll probably know and be able to scream along to by the time you're drunk enough to do it. Right. <laughs> We've all been guilty of it. I was going to say, I am a hundred percent guilty of it. Yeah, I I it's um, funny as we're, as you're talking about it, I'm sitting here and I'm like, like trying to think of like I'm like, you know, I like trying to support independent music and trying to like I know a bunch of musicians. I go to shows and stuff, but then I'm sitting here thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's me. Like getting hammered at some cover show and just being like, why can't we be friends? Like <laughs> there is like a lot to that, too. I mean, like it's a great time. Tell yeah. me that that's not a great time. You can't convince me that that's not but it just doesn't bring me like happiness yeah. the way that original music does so i'm very excited to be putting out new music again for like the first time in like three years wow was the last album i put out yeah and it's only three songs but i'm really really happy with how everything turned out so so is it mostly like are you doing it by yourself or like do you got producer backing band like what's kind of the vibe? <laughs> so at the beginning of this album I really had very little faith in my own um abilities to like uh kind of create something good mm-hmm. I suppose. Okay. So um which was great in one way and then kind of it just got out of control at the end of it like I invited a lot of people to be a part of the process and um that's expensive and kind of annoying for everybody else yeah. because then they've got all these other opinions to contend with. Um, the people that I worked with were great. So the album kind of initiated with me reaching out to Justin Melly, okay. who I've known since seventh grade. Wow. Uh, he's worked with a lot of people and uh, he also worked with me on my uh, last album, Growing Pains. Okay. And then um, it uh, evolved to me involving um, Guillermo Sobast, who is wonderful and very well known in the Toronto scene. Um, and um, and then I spoke with Ross Citrullo. I'm just trying to go down the list in order here. It's and like then an Oscar speech. You're, you're like trying to thank everybody. I'd like to thank everybody. But, you know, like it was all like an important thing. But mm-hmm. what I realized and what actually uh, my wonderful like human, my human helped me with this a lot, too, <laughs> um, is uh, that you don't need to like spread so far far and it was becoming quite expensive as well Mm -hmm. not to say that nobody's worth it but 
I was paying rent at the time too. And it was getting a little unreasonable for me to kind of keep everything up in the air the way that I was, I suppose. Um, so I kind of had to make the decision, which was really shitty and I felt awful and lesson learned, just like plan within your means Mm -hmm. and understand what what that looks like. Cause this was the first time I kind of involved anybody. Um, this is the first time I like looked at production in general, um, as like a, like a factor to consider in the album process, which is hilarious, but then it just turned into, um, Brandon and I working on things. So, um, we recorded everything in, uh, in, in the basement that we didn't end up recording at, uh, at union. Okay. So obviously all the, all the bed tracks for the drums and everything like that, the, the bass guitar, the piano, all that got tracked at union sound in Toronto. Okay. And, uh, and from there we just did everything else in the basement. We worked on all the production kind of in the basement and it's, a lot of fun and it was very no pressure and for the first time it's just kind of like i really love like what i'm doing yeah so it's so, like the really long-winded way for me to explain <laughs> that i i initially wanted to involve a lot of people and then decided that maybe that's not the best for everybody and yeah. we settled on like less is more and mm-hmm. got a like the satisfying product so it's a hard lesson to learn right whenever you're making something because you want to like you want to try and make it as best as possible you want to try and involve like you know I, I i know this guy knows how to do this and i know this guy knows how to do this and that and that and that and like this guy's a friend of mine this guy i owe a favor to whatever and you pile these people in and then you like you said you realize you just kind of get you know there's too many too many spoons too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing yeah. And it's expensive. It's very expensive to pay people. Yes. And it, like I said, it's not that they're not worth it, but it was no, a yeah. valuable lesson. You're going to hate me so much for what I've just done. Am I, is it going to be like nests? Oh, maybe it won't let me. Oh, oh my God. Yes. It didn't let me. Yes. I almost had an 80 point word, but. What? Apparently, oh my God. finish, as in the Finnish people, oh, was not valid. It's a proper noun. You can't do proper nouns, right? I hate that rule. <laughs> that is the, I disagree. It's the rule that just saved my entire life. Well, you know, I wouldn't give it that much weight, but... Hey, if you had just got an 80-point oh. word, like... I would have so you got a twenty eight letter or a twenty eight point word. It would have been like a forty point word. You're already thirty something points ahead of me. I'm not that good at math. I have an arts degree, but that sounds like an insurmountable hill. No, you'd be good. You'd be good. <laughs> uh, it's actually harder to maintain conversation than I thought. I, feel, I hope I'm not like rambling. Every listening is probably just like this girl just doesn't know when to stop. <laughs> Honestly, I've, I've said this a million times. My favorite part about doing this show is just listening to people's stories because everyone's everyone's story is different. Right. And like, you know, you can get five musicians in a room and all of them are going to have completely different outlooks on on music and production and, you know, the like their path, their journey. I think that's fascinating. So, I mean, this is just a vanity project at the end of the day for me. I, I don't give a shit if people actually like listening to it. <laughs> That's a bit. Please, oh, please like and subscribe and and follow me on all my social medias, please. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean <laughs> I it. I didn't mean it. I promise. I promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I guess that's the that's the who and the what for where. Do you remember where your first gig was? Do you remember where you played your first show? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> does anybody remember the Johnny B Club? The Johnny B Club. Do you remember that? I don't it was think in Whitby. So. Okay, okay. I okay, so this is back when I was 15, 14. Wow. 15, okay. And I was playing bass. Nice. We love it. Trying to. <laughs> I wasn't very good. Uh, in, a, in a new metal band. Nice. And it was a supernova show. Oh my god, and any musician that has played a supernova show knows exactly <laughs> the like the the feeling that's accurate for when you hear that name again. It's just like it it brings back the the haunting memories. 
of Supernova. You're getting you're getting like nom flashbacks of, of this place in Whitby. Oh my god! No, you know what? The ga- the the venue is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a cool experience, but um, yeah, underage underage shows, booking underage shows. It's like such a anyway. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble uh, for having an opinion. Uh, <laughs> but let's just be clear: I don't condone the taking advantage of the innocence of underage people that just want to play a good show and have a place to gather their friends. It shouldn't be a giant money factory. I'm not naming any names. <laughs> But if you're out Did there, we know who you are. Don't do it. I think that's an don't. easy thing to support, you know? I, I think that's an easy enough thing to support here. Just don't take advantage of, of people and specifically children. Precisely. I think that's a pretty – I think we could all get on board with that one, I feel like. Uh, I feel like everybody – yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't talk shit. I really shouldn't. <laughs> like, I shouldn't. <laughs> it's just like – I've heard anyway. I'm not the only one. That's what's important. You're not alone. I'm not alone. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's in it. It's, I, but I feel like it's almost like a rite of passage to have shows like that. So oh, at the yeah. same time, it's almost like you like, are you really a musician if you haven't had a really shitty experience? Oh, yeah. Like that. That's the best. Again, it's, it's, it's the same thing with, it's one, I think the thing that, really uh joins all of all artists together is that like whether you're a musician or a stand-up or an actor or like a writer or anything you have done something that's been an utter flop you've gone to a show with two people and someone's ride you know you've traveled to hamilton to perform to one person like Oh man, I've traveled a lot further than Hamilton to perform to one person. <laughs> exactly, but that's it, right? That's 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 yeah. the journey. You know what I mean? It is. It is. You know what? It is. And like for all the shit that I can say about certain experiences, there are times when I'm sure that I have been extremely unreasonable <laughs> or like difficult. <laughs> like you know, like so. It's not to say that it's yeah. I mean, I mean, Noah. I mean, no offense, and I'm certainly not uh, claiming innocence to certain, to certain, you know, being the cause of certain experiences, I suppose. I'm sure I've been difficult. I am 100% innocent. I have never been difficult ever. And sure, sure, sure. I'm sure anyone who's ever worked with <laughs> me can 100% attest I am just the absolute nicest human being on planet Earth. That's me. You know what? I believe it. Aww. I believe it. I do. Aww. I do. <laughs> um, I mean, you're my new best friend after all, so. Woo! All right, stop the podcast. We did it. We made it, boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love, honestly, I love hearing people's stories of their first show or their worst show or whatever. Like, because again, it, it, it just, it, beca- it fills out the painting, right? Because people look at at artists, entertainers, you know, some people, again, you know, not to name names or cause a fight or whatever, but some people will look at entertainers and performers and just be like, well, you know, you got an easy life. You just got to, you know, wake up and go on a stage oh, you know, whatever. And people don't yeah. realize it's 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 hard, man. It's hard. You know, you you get I'm sure you'll agree with this. You get out of bed. Your throat's a little sore. You got a gig that night that you got to go to. But like, yeah. you, know, you don't want to well, go. You, know, you got like, stuff to do, you know? Yeah, it's it's the inevitable juggling of everything else in life right. that needs to accompany. Because it's like for me, it's not realistic. Like for a time, I was making a living off of playing music, right. um, which is to say that I was gigging six to nine times a week at a bunch Dang. of gigs that I really didn't like playing the same four hours of material over and over and Oof. over again, you know? And it just like, for me, I, it's not that I'm not social. Right. Um, but I am the type of person, um, admittedly who will go home and it still chews, it chews up a lot of my energy when I go home. And I think about these interactions that I've had with people and, and it's just like, I have a lot of social anxiety. Mm-hmm. 
like I'll take a lot home with me. And so when I'm kind of unable to give people like the attention that they, some people are more demanding of than others, right? Uh, you know, forwardly, but just in, in terms of like the attention that I feel I owe to people in a social situation, for mm-hmm. instance, because I'm thinking about how exhausted I am and all the gigs that I have to do. It's like relatable to most people. Ew. <laughs> I know I'm getting all the gross. I have to get rid of a Z, man. What do you want from me? That's gross. What do I do with a Z? <laughs> Not that. It's a friggin' Z, man. I don't have the Scrabble dictionary. I have an arts degree. I'm three letters, man. That's me. <laughs> That's it. Right, right. I'm not a all journalist. Right. <laughs> I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not. A, I tried to spell a Higgs, but I don't know if that's. I know that's like a particle or something, right? But I don't know if there's a Z in it, and I don't know how many G's are in it. <laughs> All right. I'll give it to you. I'm glad you'll let me off this once. Just this once, though. <laughs> um, what was I even saying? Oh, my God. Was I on a tangent again? I see uh, that. Um, oh, so out of vowels. That's fine. Whatever, Scrabble. Um <laughs> I didn't realize that, like, it was my turn at one point, and I, so I wasted so much of my clock. <laughs> it's so okay. Again, I, I played the, the the test round of this I did. We each had 20 minutes, and it did go to overtime, but okay. a lot of it was me clicking around. So it was, went to overtime with, like, three tiles left. So with 40 minutes, I'm sure we'll do fine. We'll be all right. We'll I be feel, all right. I feel strongly about it. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of draining on top of everything. So like you have your like normal job, you go to work. Yeah. You deal with that. Then, you know, like your car is already half loaded down with your PA system. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so you're throwing all your stuff in your car, you're going and you're gigging all night and then you're holding this day job. And like, it's nobody's saying that you have to right. do that. Yeah. But it's yeah, I feel like I feel like people don't um, maybe you're like appreciate that when they leave the bar, we still have to tear down. Yeah, I think that's what or it like, is. Yeah. Or entertain um, people that came to see us, which I'm super happy that somebody came out to see us. Yeah. You know, I'm not. The difficulty is that you never want to seem um like you're not acknowledging people. Like I hate the feeling that I've shrugged somebody off. I yeah. really hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate imagining that feeling um, being caused by me, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm the type of person that really needs time to myself. And when you are working and when you are going out to a gig after you're working and traveling into Toronto, for instance, and having to find the parking situation yeah. and like, you know, this, that, and the other, it's like, it makes for, it gives the opportunity for you to do what you love. Like that's the cost of it. And then, yeah, it's, but like, it's, it is tiring. It is exhausting after a while. And I guess like my hope is that people would uh, appreciate that and maybe not, uh, maybe not read into it so far the next time that maybe they're out trying to talk to a musician and that musician is kind of like not giving them a lot of it. It's tough. I think it's, I think it's, Funny. I think it's interesting because I, I, I've, you know, like you say, a lot of artists and entertainers and stuff have second jobs, day jobs, you know, two or three jobs because they're just trying to get by. Right. And yeah, I think and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this or not, but I think that retail specifically retail and service and doing like entertainment are very similar in terms of like, you know, like that people always want your time. People always want, you know, if you're not giving 100 percent then they notice and they get, you know, some people get weird and indignant about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just find that like there's like this existing expectation, um, which I respect and I understand. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the easiest thing to always be stepping outside of yourself and looking into other people. And like there is kind of this duty expected of you when you are in a role of customer service to um be more available uh to lend yourself to people and kind of like be attentive to people like that's kind of that is 
kind of your job in in some ways. Yeah. However, like there are situations and I have been in situations where um, it's kind of s- it's tough because you don't want to dismiss people. Right. But um, it's obvious that you're in the middle of doing something. Um, you've maybe spent time with this person earlier on in the night mm-hmm. and have told them like that you need a moment or whatever. Like this is a problem in customer service in general. Um, mm-hmm. It's twofold, right? It's, it goes two ways because on the one hand, you cannot deny the, I would say that it's explicit kind of uh, the, the explicit requirement for you in customer service to be available to customers. Right. You can't deny that. And I understand when you're having a shit day, like it's understandable. Yeah. You know, I, I can see it from both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that, the only time that I really don't understand when people want to encroach on you is when you're obviously doing something. And again, that can be social anxiety and this need for people to just have like a guiding, like, Hey, you're in the room. I'm acknowledging you, um, and your presence and that affirmation. It's like a weird thing that maybe people don't realize that they require, Mm -hmm. but I think that it's a thing that happens a lot. I would argue. Um, And, uh, I mean, some of us need it less than others and some of us need it more at different times than others. Right. I'm kind of on the fence where sometimes it's really nice to just be acknowledged and know that you're in the room and there's that panic. It's like that detached feeling where you're like floating out to sea in this really uncomfortable social situation. And you're just trying to like latch onto somebody and you're like, this person has to talk to me because they work here. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Please, you are paid to be here. Just just come stand with me, please. Please just like, give me like one minute to just make me feel good about myself so that I can re-enter this social situation with like this rejuvenated like feeling about myself it's almost like this like push to like oh you can do this don't worry yeah yeah it's like i just need that reassurance right now for five seconds that i'm that i'm a a qualified human being to be here that's all (laughs) like um oh geez it's my turn again i keep missing that you're sneaky i'm 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 like Um, a ninja man i just play i play my tiles (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my phone's also blocking like part of the grid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like playing with like three quarters of the board. Just oh, now, this. now it comes out. She's 50 points up and she's, oh, you know, I'm not seeing some of the board, you know, I could be doing better. <laughs> um, what were you even fucking talking about? Oh, I, my God. I'm so bad at this. No, Please this is great. Me. I've been working since like 6 a.m. on one assignment. Oh, my so. God. It's been interesting. Um, so, OK, so you you said I'll get you on. A, I'll get you on a new train of thought. So you said you started Thank your you. first show. You said you were 15, 14, 15 doing new metal. 15, the basis yeah. for porn. Oh famously. Yes. Um, famously, I had dreads back then. You probably wouldn't recognize me now. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me a little bit about about kind of the process. So you started you did this new metal show that, that was awful. And then now you're Edith Folk. So okay. so get me a little bit through that. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. So I was in that band for a bit. Okay. And then, um, you know, and just so, you, just so everybody knows, like, these awful experiences are also, like, what make, like, it's, like, what you look back on and laugh at. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to make it sound like it was, like, oh, what was me? Like, I loved <laughs> hanging out with my band. Like, they were my, my high school friends at the time. Like, it was all fun and whatever. Um, and then we... Uh, the band just kind of stopped happening. Yeah. And it happened. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really do much until I was about 19, 18, 19. I picked up the guitar when I was about 18. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I started singing and at first it was very quietly and I didn't think I was very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, you keep doing it and then you start writing because you start to feel good and confident. (laughs) And then I started going out to these open mics when I was 19 and old enough. Um, and, uh, and I started kind of joining some local bands. I spent a bit of time jamming as an unofficial member of Harry Holler in Oshawa. It's kind of like this gypsy 
esque band, okay. which was fun. Um, that's actually why I picked up the flute was because they already had a saxophone player. So okay. I was like, I will learn how to play the flute so I can join your. You just become a one man ska band. band. Yeah, I just like <laughs> at, at that age, I just wanted to like immerse myself in music, like performing mm-hmm. live. I just wanted it. Um, I wanted to just get good at right. so many different aspects of it too. I wanted to get good at being a front woman. I also wanted to kind of um, get good at playing a background role and just kind of like there's a really powerful satisfaction to just knowing that you've contributed all that the song needs you to contribute. Okay. Um, Rather than like, I don't know, like, (laughs) I don't know how to say this. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I sometimes it, it happens that you hear something in a song and it's kind of like, did that person just add that because they wanted to? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I believe in the highest way of like supporting, like doing things out of honor for like the music. OK, so so if something doesn't need to be played, there was a time in my life where like I would just kind of solo on everything and and do whatever but like you know there's a certain respect that music is owed as far as like what you can contribute to it okay. and like what you know what is the most suitable thing like does this song need anything and if it does what is it okay. um and and so it was just like this awesome opportunity out at open mics to just kind of be invited up to practice and sharpen your skills of like oh i have no idea what this song is but now i know what key i'm in okay now i kind of understand where the pauses of the vocals are so i can fit into the little pockets Mm -hmm. and then it's like you know is it a softer song does it require like more notes does it require just like these soft pads in the back okay like what is how can i best serve it right yeah um and that became, it just, yeah, that was my life for a long time. I just gigged and, and then I established a band. Um, we were called Mayflies Landing. It was not a very good name. Great band. Um, yeah, thank you. Great band. I went to, I went to, I went to, I think one or two shows. Great band. Thank you. Yeah, we had a good time. Um, and that's kind of, I was in Markham at that point. Um, and we were playing festivals, doing whatever. I think like we kind of got up to Mariposa Folk Festival. Okay. Was um, probably it was the summer of 2017, and that's when we put out Growing Pains. Okay. And so all through then, I mean, there were so many interactions with so many people in the Oshawa scene, in the Toronto scene, and um, in the Stouffville and Markham scene that really kind of like got me to where I was. I was a, a part of a lot of different projects, man-made forest and Mayflies landing did a joint tour together, um, out East. Hey, um, yeah, it was great. And then I just kind of hit a wall oh, yeah. and, um, and I started just like wanting to, I guess like I started listening too much to like what other people think that I, I guess like I should do or Mm -hmm. that I um, should be considering or like, how do I get to the next stage um, of it? And, and then the joy started running out Mm -hmm. and then, you know, life happens, you get involved in like unhealthy relationships and um, you know, and, and kind of just go through, a stage of like not not really being yourself and I think that we all kind of reach that at some point in our 20s I feel like that's like what the 20s is ultimately about yeah for sure <laughs> it's going is going through that void and coming out of it um yeah and then that's kind of when I decided that um maybe it was just time to change up like my intentions with music okay because for a long time it stayed pure and then I kind of lost sight of that. I lost that joy. I lost that excitement of just like honoring music. And it was just like, where's my place in it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It became less about, about the passion of it and more about the, you know, 
I want to be, I want to be the next thing. I want to be, you know, yeah. I want to succeed. And, and, I want to make money. Yeah. And the disappointment that comes with realizing that you're not just going to get there. Yeah. Right. And you put yourself out there and as sensitive people putting yourselves out there, it's like really, it can be quite devastating if you let it, you know? Yeah. So, it's hard. The, it's the first sad. time again, when you, when, especially if you taste that success and then the first time that you go to, to try and capitalize on it, it doesn't work out. And you're just like, Oh, you know, it's such a, it's a crash, yeah. right? It's, it's, well, like, yeah, the early days is such an up and down. Yeah. Mm. You get too comfortable too at times. And, and you just, um, Oh, I guess my turn again. Yeah. I'm playing Did little you? shitty words. Cause I don't know how to use, I I'll be honest with you. At one point, I had three G's and two V's. So that sucks. I, I said at the beginning, I have, I have an awful luck in Scrabble, and I meant it dearly and sincerely. Yes. <laughs> it would appear that you are correct. <laughs> um, but yeah. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Like, sometimes you just get comfortable and you coast, too, and it's easy to just assume that you're, like, fine, and then all of a sudden, like, all these younger musicians you know, get better and start surpassing you. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm not 19 anymore. (laughs) And I stopped trying to improve myself. And here we are. So not that I'm worried about getting old or anything like that. (laughs) But But again, though, that's, I think, again, that's a very, again, that's something that people, some people don't ever hit that point, right? Like there are some people who will be playing the same open mics their whole life and think that they're, you know, the cat's pajamas and don't have to change anything. And, you know, the music industry just doesn't understand them or whatever. Right. The cat's pajamas. Oh, or they don't want to be understood. It's like, that's a lie. And you do. Yeah. If somebody came over here and like, you know, offered you like an opportunity of a lifetime of music, you'd take it. Yeah. If you, you won Canadian it. Idol, you, like, and they gave you the contract, yeah. you would do it. It's just like, it's, yeah, it's that simple to me. I think that like a lot of the times, yeah, people just, we develop like weird pride issues around like strange things Mm -hmm. as people. We really do. And it's something that you constantly have to keep in check. I got really prideful at one point. I try not to now. Um, You know, you can kind of sense that it's happening when you start to fall into a specific habit of, like the way that you look at things okay, and, and like, uh, you know, like your willingness to judge and, and like your, um, lack of willingness to listen. Like there's some things that are just really indicative of when you're kind of falling into this, like, I don't know, for me at least this like weird place you go to when you're not keeping yourself really like in check with yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you have so what 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 advice would you give like that that young musician who's just trying to make it and feels like shit all the time? <laughs> right, folk music. <laughs> 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 It'll be really good. Um, yeah, I would just say like get the um, just set some of the stubbornness aside. Like part of what what's incredible about music is how much you can discover about yourself through it. Mm -hmm. And just like you spending time with your instrument, there's just so much value in that time. But I rejected this concept of having to ever sound like, or like resemble another artist in any way. Okay. I was such a purist about it um, (laughs) because I want, because I wanted to stand out, but it's like, you know, it's, reinventing the wheel is really difficult and moreover you're gonna spend a lot you're gonna waste a lot of time and a lot of good ideas um if you're simply like eliminating them because of this like notion that you have in your head that it's not good enough if if it was inspired by somebody else or can be like i guess referenced to in a way that like reflects be like oh you sound like this or this song sounds like this like right. it's a thing that people do people are going to relate you to things that they know yeah of course. it's just a fact yeah. yeah 
And maybe I'm the only one that ever got sore about it. But it held me back a lot. It Guarantee my you're not. That. Guarantee it you're not. <laughs> good. That's good. I feel better about it. <laughs> but I got really weird about it. And so it's just like, you know, don't shoot yourself in the foot and um, and kind of just like limit your creative capacity mm-hmm. because you feel like you need to stand out. Don't like whatever, you, like just don't limit your creativity. You don't have to go out and play all the time if you don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. Lots of people don't do that. Um, I did. It was fun. I think that there's a lot to learn from playing and gigging out, but there are other ways to approach music. Mm-hmm. If you love doing, you know, making your music in your basement or whatever, then do it right. that way. And, you know, obviously challenge yourself, but I, I don't know. Like it's, it's hard to give advice to young people. I feel so <laughs> out of touch with how people like perceive things. The kids um, these days. Yeah, I do. But yeah, I guess my one of my biggest challenges was that and the other one was probably just like don't give too much um weight to the opinions of others mm-hmm. it ties into that but like don't i had this like whole like fomo thing and i felt like i had to do everything and really compromised a lot of my feelings and kind of didn't get to pursue things that I wanted to pursue Mm -hmm. because I felt like I didn't like, I felt like whoever I was working with probably knew better anyway. And that's not the case just because you're new to it. Doesn't mean that you're not sick. So (laughs) fact, facts be (laughs) facts be facts. See, I can get down with the the kids lingo. I'm I'm thinking cool. I'm hip and cool. <laughs> That's the um, title. Sarah Fez Ackerley, hip and cool. We've, yes. we've titled the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's probably my virtuous advice. It's like, yeah. I mean, Don't it, it's as good advice as any, right? I think I think a huge thing that a lot of people struggle with is, uh, oh, 30 points, uh, is is that, right? It's uh, There's so much confidence in performing that you know, people you don't think about until you're doing it, right? Yeah. I only laugh because I'm not very confident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're confident. I mean, you're above averagely confident. You're, you've made multiple albums of Somewhat. music. And you go yeah, on stage. Well, yeah, I guess when you put it that way. Right? You're here. You're, you have put your video onto a podcast, onto a live service, which is, you know, more than 90% of people, I would say. It's true. It's crazy I guess to think I'm, about I, it like that. I guess like I'm confident, but I'm not fearless. Right. Like by no means am I fearless. Yeah. I have a lot of social anxiety. I've got a lot of fear around being good enough. And when I'm playing on a stage, like I close my eyes and I don't open them basically for the, like I've really had to work on like opening my eyes and connecting <laughs> with people um, that like in the audience because right. I just don't do it because it's nerve wracking. Of course. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it can be argued that you don't really need to be. You don't need, like, super confidence. You you just need to, like, push yourself to do it, I guess. I mean, that's... But that's once you, it, once right? you feel it, yeah, yeah. Once you feel confident, like, you don't need to feel like you're, like, the best to, like, have the required amount of confidence to go out and push yourself to perform. I remember my first open mic, I was... Oh my, I almost fell off the chair. Oh, no. My friend was supposed to come up with me and then she backed out and left me up <laughs> the in classic. front of the microphone. And I like almost shook like off the seat. It was so bad. Oh. That's but the classic. That's that's the classic story of your homie goes yeah. like, yo, we're gonna go to this open mic, we're gonna have such a it's gonna be so sick, and then you get there she and there's like the not a bit. She was in the room with me and like <laughs> she like was beside me. And I was like grabbing my guitar and tuning it and I turn around and she wasn't beside me anymore. Oh no. She was on the other side of the room with all her friends. I was just like, you done me like that. I, you done me so dirty. I can't believe you it. You done me like that. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
And uh, PSA for anyone listening at home, if you have like an artist friend or like a, if, if they're a musician or if they're like a comedian or whatever, if you tell them that you're going to get on stage with them, don't be a dick about it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's and like, I hear say, that all the time. Oh my God. Just tell people that you're not going to go to the show too, because the, oh thing, is, God, the yes. thing that you might not know is that we have to be able to somewhat confidently give some bookers a guarantee, especially if they don't know us. Yeah. And especially when you're new to the scene or like, you know, you're just not known yet. We have to be able to kind of give a confident answer. So sometimes we're asking way in advance for people, like how many people do you think you can get to the show? Well, Mm -hmm. you know, you ask your friends and you hope for the best. And like you, you try to accommodate for potential losses in the numbers of invites that get approved on Facebook. Yeah. But like (laughs) the dramatic drop is so like you just your faith in your friends does not (laughs) allow for the calculation (laughs) of reality that actually like the miscalculation that actually occurs. And that sucks. So just be honest. It's better. The honesty is always the best policy. I know that people somehow don't fucking believe that it's the truth. It is true. Honesty is always the best policy. It's really hard. And more so, like, it's just disappointing, man. I Like, I can't tell you, like, how defeating it is when you, like, really work hard. And I'm not saying this to be, like, mm, poor me. Yeah. Like, if you would have told me that you didn't want to go, it would have been whatever to me. Yeah. Not speaking to any friends specifically here. That sounded John, so okay. <laughs> John and, and, and Mary, okay. I'm not talking that about anyone specifically. <laughs> This set is so aggressive, but like, yeah, like (laughs) I would just say, like, just be honest. Like I, it's really disappointing when you really work towards something and hope that, you know, you can, I guess, just have people come out and appreciate it that Mm -hmm. say that they're going to come out. Like you just want that. I don't know. I guess you just want that approval or whatever or like if you're counting on it that's all i think that's the big thing too that people i think i think you really like touched on something important there that like a lot of people don't know this because they don't do it but like when you are starting off as a, I think especially for musicians but even for like uh comedians and and whatever you know if you're starting off and you're trying to get on like a bigger show they'll ask you you know you need to get you know 10 people, 15 people or whatever, get on the show. Like we need you to bring people in. And so like a lot of time when they're asking you stuff, it's like, like, I need you to come, dude. If you say you're going to come, like if you don't want to come, that's chill. But if you say you're going to come, like I need you to do that because I am, I like my whole bacon is relying on that, man. Yeah, that's it. And it's not just that. It's like the most disappointing part is when you're playing with artists that you've been really excited to be on a bill with. Mm. And you're embarrassed. Like, it's embarrassing. Yeah. Because you stopped asking other people and you stopped pushing uh, some people, like, you know, banking that the investment of time that you spent kind of like talking with like people that have kind of given you that guarantee, that promise, will make good will make good on it. It's disappointing. It's like, you know, you're in front of these people that, you know, obviously I'm sure that they've been in your shoes, but business is business yeah. and you're trying to build yourself. Like nothing feels worse than just like expecting people to come and they don't. Yeah. So just be honest. Just, just tell them, just tell them no, as much as it sucks. And as much as your friend might get like upset yeah. or whatever, like it's better. Like you say, honesty is the best policy. It's better to be like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to make it. You know, I'm not going to show up, whatever, than to say, yeah, I'm going to show up and then text them like the night of or or the day or after. Just be even, like, oh, most man, people don't even text you, man. Oh, most I know. people wait until the next day to be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's I like, you know what? Oh. Just don't. <laughs> Just don't. I'm so done. <laughs> but yeah, like it's like obviously like, you know, friends are friends. You get past it. But it's like it's kind of a shitty expectation on a friendship level. Mm-hmm. It's just a shitty expectation um, to always be the one expected to like let it go, yeah, I guess. Of course. Right. 
like it's always up to you because it's like you invited them out or whatever. Meanwhile, like if they fucking invited you for drinks at their house and you had a gig, it'd be like, oh, you're always gigging. Like you're always like, gigging. yeah, maybe we can do the same thing at the same time where you come to my show and have a drink or like, you know, whatever. It's like, <laughs> It's like this weird expectation of like you go to other people's houses because you you have a life outside of your gigs and you want to share that with people. And it's, again, not expected. But if they tell you that, you're you know, they're going to be there. Like, imagine. Imagine like somebody's having a party or whatever at their house, Mm -hmm. which does happen, I guess, too, at times. But it's like their friends just all don't show up. Like the level of disappointment you feel after you've prepped like lots of hors d'oeuvres or food or like set up drinks, went out of your way, clean the house. All these things are so minimal in yeah. the amount of, of energy that gets exercised sitting and trying to get all of your wrangle, all your bandmates for one. Yeah. Oh my God. You're paying, <laughs> <laughs> you're paying the band. Hopefully. I mean, the boys have been really good to me over the years mm-hmm. and they like have played a lot of shows that didn't pay. And like, I'm forever grateful for like the, the, the free kindnesses that were given to me in my lifetime, like in my music and like the faith that people have had in me. And I'm sorry that I never paid off because nobody comes to my show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, like it, it's like, it's a lot of work. You're putting together posters, you're trying to go online and, you know, and for somebody that's not very social, that's a hard thing to do. And then there's the element of like, you know, you're writing the songs, you're rehearsing the songs, you get to the venue, you're talking to the venue, you're talking to the other bands about all the back line. And by the time you get to the fucking show, you're just so excited that you're just going to perform. Yeah. And then you walk out and nobody is there. Yeah. And that's your hors d'oeuvres can kiss my ass in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> to the disappointment Fuck of your that. sausage rolls, because, Janet. Because you'll still fucking eat those. <laughs> Don't lie to me. You're going to put them in the fridge and you'll come back to them. They're still good the next day. <laughs> okay? Oh, my you can God. You eat them <laughs> to solve the issue of the feeling of hurt. So I don't want to hear it. It's just difficult to, um, yeah, it's difficult to explain to people sometimes. I think honestly, like, that's the best way I've ever heard it described is, is, is like, it's, it is, it's like a dinner party or it's like, it's like a party or like any, any other, like, I don't want to say like normal, but any other, like, like average thing that you try and plan, it's impossible to plan a bunch of adults to get into a room at the same time. So yeah. when it goes off without a hitch, it's amazing. And when you're an entertainer and someone in chat said as a community, I really hard to this, like when you're an entertainer, that's your job. Like you have to do that. Every yeah. night, five days a week, just trying to herd a bunch of cats in a room so you can play a guitar. Like, yeah, yeah, it's you know, and then it gets to a point where you're just like, I'm tired of chasing people down. Yeah. So like, yeah, then then that's that's when you go on hiatus, like me. That's when the burnout <laughs> sets in. Yeah, For sure. exactly. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone uh, listening at home who's not watching the video version of this podcast, I want to point out that before the show started, I was like, you know what? I'm not that good at Scrabble. I have kind of bad luck with the tiles. And Sarah was all, oh, no, you're going to do great. It's probably going to be a fine game. It is 308 to 213. But you got up past you got up past 120. I did get I did get I got to 200 for, I believe, the first time ever. So I feel very confident about at least that fact. That's great. I I appreciate the consolation prize I'm being handed. That's great. <laughs> you did great, honey. You're so good at this. Oh my god, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. You're so <laughs> I just, you know, so impressed. So impressed. I wanna get into so I can't I thought of a little so You've played a lot of Scrabble. We just played Scrabble for a good solid hour while we talked, and I thought that was a great time. My favorite part of Scrabble in real life is trying to cheat. And I don't know if you relate it to this at all, but when I, as shown, as stated, have terrible luck with the tiles, sometimes I put down like an I, a U, a Q, and a Z and go like, it's a, it's a kind of boat. Yeah, it's a, no. uh, it's, it's a it's a Chinese boat, actually. Yeah, yeah, don't Google it. You haven't, uh, you haven't played Scrabble in my household. We, uh, we pull yep. out the manual. Oh, shh. 
shit. We're by the book, man. Yeah, no, you, you don't get away with anything. I, I come from a house. I come from a family of of coasters and farmers. So all we have is charisma. So if you can if you can debate it hard enough, most of the time someone will just be like, you know what? Sure. It's it's a boat, I guess. I you had to get rid of the queue. I get it. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> so you know what? I feel like that's like a good approach to life in general too. Though it's like a valid, it's a valid approach to life. It's like if you're convincing enough in anything that you say, if you're passionate enough about it, then the world will follow. It's it's the only way I've gotten anywhere. So I want to play a game with you. I, I came up with a game. It's called it's it's all about Scrabble words. I'm gonna give you a word. And I want you to tell me if it's a valid Scrabble word or a word that I'm oh, yeah. either made up or is invalid in Scrabble in some way. Okay. 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 Our first word is, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. So I'm going to spell this out for you. It's U-M-I-A-Q. I'm going to guess it's Umiak. Oh, man. Is that a valid Scrabble word? As defined yeah. by ScrabbleDictionary.com, or did I pull it directly out of my ass? If you pulled it out of your ass, I'd be pretty impressed. <laughs> pretty good, like, it's a pretty good one. It's got me thinking. I'm going to say no. You're going to say it's not a, not a real word? Yeah. It actually is. It's a, it's speaking oh of God. boats, it's an Inuit boat that they use up in, up North Canada. It's made of I skins. Somehow. So if you like, ever have a me. so if you ever have a U and M and I and A and a Q together on your Scrabble board, there you go. You have an umia um 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 umayik umayik. I'll look it up later. Yeah, but if you had the Q anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if you have the Q, you're pretty much dead in the water. I'm serious. I'm I'm so dead serious. You know, but if you had the Q and the U, it, I mean, you got you got pretty much anything made there see you if think it's that. a great word to learn it's a good word this is the it's educational part of let's be best friends i'm trying that's to make like how you, people. that's how you like really flex it's <laughs> like you know what i i could have put the q somewhere near the beginning of the word and coupled it with the u or like whatever or yeah. it could have been like you know the suffix that with a Q and a U, but I decided to flex so hard that I made this word where the U and the Q were on Opposites. opposing ends. Yeah. I made you pull out the Scrabble dictionary. Take that. Yeah. I made you question that. Makes, yeah, that's a good one. All um, right. So our next word is Zod. Z-O-D. No, that's made up. That's made Zod up? You. Are you sure? Because yeah. you thought the last thing was made up. It's made up. It is made up. You made that up. <laughs> it is made up. That is the that is the villain of of the Superman movie that came out like five you years ago. You made that up. <laughs> okay. I don't know about it. You're one and one, so you're doing I think above average. I'd say if I wasn't looking at this list, I would get a lot of these wrongs. The next one is Zeta. Z e t a. Is oh, that a valid Scrabble word? <laughs> it just makes me think of Zena, like Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> oh man. Is that a valid Scrabble word? I want to say no, but I also want to say yes. Mm. If I just answer no every time, how are my odds? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm looking at the list, and if you say no every time, you will have a 50%, which is a pass. So it's a valid strategy. That's a, pass. That's a pass. I mean, I'm just thinking because it's probably it's like sounds like a Greek letter, which means that it's probably like not to uh, like do we use the does that, that count? I'm gonna say no. You're gonna say no? Yeah, I don't think it would count. In fact, it is valid. Because it's it's it's, what? it's it's Greek, it's a Greek letter and uh, a Latin letter, I think, as well. And because you can, hey, and so there you go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. If you ever have to get rid of a Z, Zeta's actually, that's my go-to getting rid of a Z word, is Zeta. That's, that's the only good word I've ever had in my life. Speaking of Z noises, Xena, X-E-N-A. Is that a valid no, Scrabble word? that's a name. <laughs> Why are they pulling Captain Zeta into this in every way that they can? Zeta, Xena, like... 
I like that you say they as if this wasn't a list that I came up with like two hours ago. It's a consp- The Illuminati is putting Catherine Zeta Jones into Scrabble, and I am not about it. You are correct. <laughs> Xena is a name. It's Xena Warrior Princess, the the yes. the show that launched I, a thousand eighties puberties. A hundred percent. So good. <laughs> so good. That haircut. Oh, that's a. I think that haircut is like the quintessential like. The 80s and early 90s, this woman could annihilate you if she wanted to. Yeah. Like bodybuilders had it. Wrestlers had it. Like any woman who could whip your ass had the had like the the bangs and the like the box long hair. Yeah, that's the warrior. That's That's the the warrior. warrior. Uh, Our next word is Fonji. We're getting near the end. F-A-N-J-I. No, that's not. No way. No way. I just feel like it's like yes, no, yes, no so far. So So far, you've literally said no to every single one, which again is a valid strategy. I just gotta keep saying no. (laughs) You've got me. Fangi is a word that I I literally went like on my keyboard, and that's what came up. (laughs) I did make it. Doesn't even sound like a. Doesn't even sound like a good attempt. No, I, I I'll be honest with you. I got the I I got all the real words together, right? And then I was like, "Shit, what do I do for the fake words?" <laughs> last word. I pre- you know what? I appreciate that you put this together. The I last word. This one. Okay. All right. You are what? So you you said no to both the valids. So that's two wrong. But you said no to all the invalids. So you're at three and two. This last one is racks. R A X. Is it valid or invalid? Is that a valid Scrabble word? To get rid of your X. You know, I'm just going to say yes because I haven't said it yet. Fuck. That is correct. Rax is a valid Scrabble word. It means to stretch out, according to the Scrabble dictionary. That's a score of four and two. Which is good. Nice. That's like a what? That's I'll like a it. what? Like a like a sixty or something? I don't know. Math. Don't know. Something like that. Something along those lines. Sixty or sixty-five or something like that. We are coming to the end of our time together, which I know is very sad. I we I personally have had a great time. Me too. I haven't yeah socialized in a long time. <laughs> That's the other nice thing about the show, right? We're all in lockdown, <laughs> so everyone's just like, "Holy shit!" I just get to talk. Oh, it's a social interaction. <laughs> We're getting into Man. we're gonna go into the last segment of the show. It's my favorite part of doing this show. It's called the lightning round. Oh no. I call it I love that reaction. It's very simple. The rules are very simple. I am gonna put one minute on a timer. I'm gonna ask you as many this or that questions as we can get through in that minute. I'm gonna compare your score to the score that I've already that of to my answers, and we're gonna see how close we are to becoming best friends. Okay. Okay? It's very, okay. very easy stuff. Nothing to be worried about. No pressure. No pressure. No uh, pressure. We just played a wonderful game of Scrabble. I think in some countries we are we are uh, common law married. So you don't got to worry possibly. about the score. All right. I've got the questions ready. I got the timer ready. If you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. In three, two, one. Cookies or cake? Cake. Uh, cats or dogs? Cat. Uh, computer games or console games? Console. Uh, pop music or rock music? Rock music. Stuffed animals or dolls? Stuffed animals. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Aw, so close. A hot chocolate or coffee? Coffee. Um, morning or evening? Mm, ah, morning. Morning, okay. Text message or call? Call. Libraries or museums? Museum. French or Spanish? French. Uh, summer or winter? Summer. Love or money? Love. Um, books or movies? Ah, movies. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. And chocolate is the answer. That is our minute gone. I am going to calculate the answers. I'm going to put them all. I'm going to feed them all into the Calculatron 5000. And uh, and I'm going to get the score that you got. While I do that, I want you to tell the audience listening at home where they can find you, what you're up to, and where you want them to follow you on the internet. 
Okay. Well, um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at Edith Folk. Uh, that's all one word. And you can find my new music officially on Spotify December 19th. So if you follow me um, on Instagram, you can find my link tree. And you can follow me also on Spotify. And other than that, I'm fairly limited to <laughs> my social interactions. But um, I look forward to seeing you there. That's called exclusivity, where I'm from. You got it. You got to make sure you follow her on the right channels. Or by God, you're going to miss it. And that's just it. So make sure, honestly, so you said December 19th, right? December 19th. And is yeah, that both, yeah, that's that. both the albums, the, the rock one and the folk one? No, that's going to, I decided to leave the melancholic folk in 2020 and we're going to release the uh, rock stuff early 2021. Okay, perfect. So the, so the, we're going to get, we're going to get into sad boy hours, December 19th. Yes. And that's Edith Folk on Spotify, right? Edith Folk, yeah. Wonderful. Everyone, make sure you go follow. Make sure you go follow Edith Folk on Instagram. Make sure you follow her on Spotify. Sarah, it's been a lovely time with you. I want to let you know. Two, four, six. I got distracted. Eight, ten. <laughs> uh, you got a final score of ten out of fifteen, which that's I think like a seventy-five or something. That's an above average score at at, a, at any rate. That's passing you through schools. Easy. Yeah. I think that we've proven, someone in the chat has said 66%, wildly off arts degree. I think that at the end of the day, I think we've become- I tried, become, you know, I really tried. <laughs> we've become, I think, honestly, the ones I'm most surprised by, I'll say it, is that you said morning and you said call. I don't think we've ever had any kind of entertainer on the show that has said both morning and call. Everyone is nighttime text message Andes. That's it. <laughs> Did I mention to you that most of my shows these days are retirement homes and are matinee in the afternoon? Okay, that makes more sense. I respect that. Because I'm a call man myself. I'm 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 much more, yeah. I'm too much of a boomer. So I don't like typing. Better. I got these big, big ass thumbs that don't really work very well with the typing thing. I just like yeah. to call. Yeah. You know, just a nice, a nice phone call. That's it. It's, you know, what's wrong with having to, you know, hear somebody's voice on the other line? Yeah, it's nice, especially right now, because we don't see each other anymore. It's good to hear you people's voices. I remember the days of dial-up when you couldn't even be on the internet and on the phone at the same time. Kids these days could never. And here we are on the internet on our phones. It's, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's a crazy thing when you think about it, legitimately. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being a part of the show, Let's Be Best Friends. I want to thank all the people watching home. I want to thank the people watching live right now on twitch.tv slash oldkingcake. If you're right now watching this on YouTube or listening to it on Spotify, think about uh, following us here uh, at Let's Be Best at Let's Be Best Pod on Twitter, or you can follow me personally at Old King Cake. I post all the time and whenever we have a live show coming up, and they're a lot of fun to do. I love taking suggestions from chat. I love when chat's, you know, here with the guest and we're talking and have a good time. Also, I want to point out that if you like the brand, we have merchandise, merchandise, what? merchandise. Woo! We got hats, we got shirts, we got uh, a beanbag chair that I hope to God you don't buy because uh, I, I sell it at a $50 loss. So no one, please no one buy it. Please. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank, uh, I want to thank our best friends on this show. I want to thank Isabel Wing for the intro to our show. And I want to thank Seth Feldman for the outro to our show. Make sure you follow our guest Edith Folk on Instagram and Spotify. Look for that album December 19th. That is all the time we have for today. So remember that your mom was your best friend at one point, so give her a call, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.